Oh, how I love the sound of a ratchet in the morning. Let's do snowboard bindings today, shall we? What's going on everybody? Welcome to Mountain Vibes. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hopefully you're all enjoying a nice fantastic week, enjoying all this amazing fall weather we're all having. And to all my Canadian viewers out there, I'm um, hoping you guys had an amazing Thanksgiving long weekend, you know, still enjoying all those leftovers, you know, pie, stuffing, turkey, because there's always stuff left over. But anyways, let's move forward a little bit now, you know, thinking about winter again. So let's dive right into some snowboarding bindings, shall we? All right, so before I kind of like dive into it all, I figure I kind of go over the basic anatomy of a snowboard binding. So let's insert picture here. And this is pretty much what a binding is gonna look like. It's a very generic binding. Also disclaimer, all the bindings that are shown in this video are my own personal bindings. I'm not being paid to use these. I am not being paid to say anything about them at all. With that being said, let's just go over what a binding consists of. So you've got a high back, a heel cup, base plate, ankle strap, toe strap, ladder straps and a footbed. So just to simplify things a little bit here, what a lot of companies tend to do is they will rate their bindings from a stiffness level um, from let's say one to 10. Well, actually come to think of it, I've never actually seen a binding rated at a one. But anyways, think of one as the softest binding and 10 as the stiffest binding. So if you think about it, your a soft binding is gonna be a lot more forgiving, it's gonna be a lot tailored more towards beginners. Uh, it's gonna be a lot easier for them to make mistakes, and, you know, it's gonna be a lot easier to use. Then you, as you start kind of going up and up, you know, you'll have like your park people that kind of want something still a little soft, but a little bit more, um, slightly more aggressive. Then your all mountain riders that want a little bit more response than that. So that's gonna be like around a mid stiff level. So like was like five to a seven. And then there's gonna be your, your free riders. Uh, those are people who want something extremely rigid. They want the best reaction out of their, out of their bindings. You know, quick turns, very fast. And then, if, you know, if you guys slam on the brakes, that's gonna really help them too. So just keep that in mind if you are shopping, you know, when companies, you do see something that's rated with a number, just think of it as one super soft, 10 super stiff, and just kind of figure it out from there. So now with saying all of this, you know, let's kind of start breaking down each and every bit of the binding. So to start, we'll start with the high back here. Now, this is what's gonna give you a lot of support. This is what's gonna give you a lot of the reaction when it comes to turning. You know, you'll lean back on the board and it's just gonna allow you to kind of get back tip you onto your heel side edge. Now, same thing, there's a lot of different materials that can be used. When you are looking at a lower price point binding, it's gonna be made of what's referred to as like a polycarbonate, which is essentially a fancy word for plastic. Uh, they tend to be very forgiving. And by forgiving, I mean that it's just gonna be able to, it's very soft. You can actually take it, hold it, and you can actually bend the thing. So this is gonna way to dictate how stiff a binding is. So like this is one end of the spectrum. And, and then this is gonna be the other end of the spectrum. So this one here is made out of carbon fiber. So you get this guy and you can barely move it. So something like this is gonna give you the best reaction. The only downside to it though, it is rather expensive. So as soon as you start getting into those more exotic materials, you are paying a premium for it. But then again, if you're willing to spend the money, you will be definitely getting a ton of performance out of your gear. Uh, if you're someone who's looking more for more of a park binding, as I said, it will be a little bit more towards the softer side that may actually be cut a little bit lower, which will allow you to kind of like tweak your grabs, you know, kind of come off of like your rotations a little bit easier, you know, kind of save yourself from, uh, from falling all over the place in a sense. All right, so moving forward, shall we? Literally. Uh, so uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna explain uh, the heel cup and the base plate all together. Because most of the time that is actually all one piece, some companies will actually split it up and use two different types of materials. But for sake of argument, I'm just gonna use this binding here for now. So with this here, this is all gonna be made up of one solid nylon piece. Uh, so the whole purpose of this is that you kind of get like the same sort of reaction all the way through. Now what some other companies may do is that they will divide it in half. Well, not half, but they will use the, they will make the heel cup and use that as aluminum and make the base plate a little bit softer. So the reason for that is you're not gonna quite get the same torsional stiffness uh, or reaction out of the bottom half of your binding, but with it being aluminum in the back, it's gonna be a little bit lighter. It's also gonna be more stiff. So when you go to lean back on it, this is gonna give you a little bit more support than what it would be if uh, you had the same softer material on the bottom of the base plate. Now there are different ways to do it. You know, you'll get a uh, polycarbonate, which is like a lower end plastic. You'll get something that's mixed in with kind of like a nylon and plastic. 
makes it a little bit more rigid. Uh, there's a few companies that still make bindings with aluminum. You know, the whole argument there is that you get lightweight and you get a lot of stiffness with it. Uh, the only downside to it that I personally find is that you're gonna have more bolts to do up because what'll happen is they're gonna have to do this into two pieces. This will not all be in one piece. But you know, some people swear by aluminum, some people don't like it. I personally prefer just like a one piece nylon kind of thing. But if something, but it's entirely up to you with what you go for. And then there's the top end, you know, where the whole base plate and heel cup would, could essentially be made out of carbon fiber. Same thing, that's gonna be extremely lightweight and extremely rigid. Those are gonna be saved for the very top end bindings. Now, if you're looking for something like that, you gotta be ready to spend, you know, 500 plus dollars on a binding. So just, you know, be prepared for if you really want like the nice top shelf material. Okay, so now let's move on to straps, shall we? So. This is gonna be a little bit simpler. You know, these don't necessarily dictate the price of a binding. However, they do change the performance a little bit. So with this particular binding here, it is not super thick. The whole purpose of that is that there's not gonna be a lot of padding, you're, which means you're gonna get a lot more reaction out of your board. This is gonna clamp down really tight onto your boot. And then it's, when, when you lean into it, it's not gonna give nearly as much. Whereas let's say if you had a binding that had a little bit more cushion to it, you know, you're gonna get more comfort out of it, but you may not necessarily get the same reaction. So generally stuff that's a little bit like mid to lower grade will have a little bit more padding to it. But then again, something that's more towards like the bottom of the barrel may not have a lot of padding at all, you know, just to help companies save costs. And then, so then we can go move to the toe strap or toe cap, depending on what type of binding is you're using. This particular binding here has what's referred to as a toe cap, meaning that the thing actually goes right over your toe. So the whole purpose of this is that when this is done up on a boot, this is gonna hold your boot right back into the binding. And as well, it's gonna give you that nice quick reaction. As soon as you lift up, the binding is going to move with you. Certain companies will design them a little bit differently. You know, this one here has a slight little cutout on the top. Purpose of that is just so that it allows it to shape over the top of the boot. Other companies will have it, you know, kind of more of a bare bones, almost borderline plastic. Still same idea, it will help mold and shape to the front of the boot. All right, so then there's still other companies, you know, on their lower end products that will still use like the over the toe as opposed to a toe cap, meaning that the binding literally loops over the top of the toe. Now, you don't quite get the same performance out of this. You, you get a little bit more comfort in a sense, you know, just a lot simpler to use. You don't necessarily have to fiddle with it at all the time. And then there's some companies that will do what they refer to as a convertible strap, meaning that you could either go over the top or over the toe. As you can see, this one doesn't quite reach nearly as far, but you know, it's some companies will allow you to kind of do that. Actually, and then moving on, so we'll do the ratchets here. So that's all these guys right there. Um, you know, same thing, lower end bindings, they'll be made, mostly be made of plastic. They're pretty cheap. The downside to having something like that is, you know, if it's really cold out, they could potentially crack, they could potentially freeze. Uh, when you spend a little bit more money, you'll get a little bit different materials. You know, most common would be aluminum, you know, same thing, save weight. And then a few other towards the higher end side, side of things, you probably get more exotic kind of materials, more like magnesium. Same idea, you know, try to cut down weight. And then last but not least, so we'll just talk about briefly about like, you know, the foot beds that are on here. Now, most mid, mid price to high end bindings will have give you a full on bed. Now the purpose of this is to kind of give you a lot more better shock absorption, a little bit more cushioning that will help reduce fatigue. You're not going to feel all the vibrations from your board all the way through your body, you know, kind of help with your knees, your legs, all of that stuff. Uh, with a lower end price point binding, you'll just kind of get like a half bed sort of like this where you can see the disc all the way through. They're not gonna necessarily be the most comfortable. You know, this foam tends to be pretty dense. Uh, you know, same thing, it's just a matter of them trying to cut costs. So it's just a matter of what essentially you're really looking for in a binding. All right, so there's one last thing before I let you go. You know, a lot of the components on bindings, you know, they are proprietary to that specific company. So one thing I may suggest is, you know, spend about an extra 10, 15 bucks, you know, get some spare parts because, you know, if anything breaks, you know, you may not be able to find it. 
So if you do have a few uh, spare parts like kicking around like in your car and your backpack, you know, it may save you a day on the mountain. So there's my little rundown on snowboard bindings. You know, hopefully you all got something out of this. If you've got any questions, by all means, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So with all that being said, hit that button if you like this video, shred it if it's something that you're into. Subscribe if you are not already. Please don't forget to support your local shop. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next video. Shoo!